Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello children Hello everyone So today I have a vocabulary video for you I'm going to give you 30 alternatives of Please I'm sorry And I'm tired Bored Sad And I'm fine For these 5 words I'm going to give you uh, Vocabularies uh, That means Um now these are the words and phrases we find ourselves saying over and over again, right? Like this is incredibly common between you all. So what I'm going to give you all is I'm going to give you all some other alternatives which you can use instead of using the same word please, sorry, I'm tired. Okay? So uh, this this would be very, 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 very helpful, really helpful to enrich your vocabulary. Understood? So let's get started. The first one. Alternatives for please. When it comes to please, uh, we always use this word, right? Please do that. Please do this. Can you come, please? So when you now, if what I'm going to do to the audio today is, I'm give you some alternatives for please, um, without saying please. Understood? Now here, here we are going to focus on saying please when asking somebody to do something. Okay, remember that. So the first word. Would you mind? Would you mind? See the example. Would you mind passing me the pencil? Would you mind passing me the pencil? Would you mind passing me the salt? Would you mind give me your book? Understood. Without saying please, please give me the pencil. Please give me that. Please give me that. This is very nice, right? Would you mind passing me the pencil? That is the first one. Slide now we have a bit slightly more complex version of it. Okay, this one is a bit complex one. I'd appreciate if you could. I'd appreciate if you could. I'd appreciate if you could let me complete my homework by next week. Now you have not done your online class work, and now you are asking your teacher for permission. You'd say, I'd appreciate if you could let me complete my homework by next week, teacher. Understood. So this, these are very good ways of saying it, right? Now, another one, we have a slightly more casual one. This one is a bit casual. Would you be able to? Would you be able to? Would you be able to pick me up, pick me up from the station? Would you be able to pick me up from the station? Uh, would you be able to come to my home tomorrow? So if you are please come pick me from the station, apart from saying please, you can say, would you be able to pick me up from the station? This is very nice, right? Now this one, the next one is a bit quite, you know, posh. Well, if you want to be very posh and very, you know, right? So if you want to be like that, you have to say this. I don't suppose. I don't suppose. I don't suppose you could lend me the bicycle. I don't suppose you could lend me the bicycle. You can ask like that. Understood? I don't suppose you could lend me the book. Now you now you have a friend. You want her book to copy down the notes. So you go to her. I don't suppose you could lend me your book, Hafsa. I don't suppose you could lend me the book, Hamid. So you can ask like that. Understood? This one is quite posh-like thing. If you want to be posh, you can use this please. Understood? Then the next one is a really, really nice one. I wonder if you might. I wonder if you might. I wonder if you might lend me your jacket. Understood? I wonder if you might postpone the meeting. You can ask like that without saying, please, can you get, can I lend me your jacket? Can you lend me your jacket? Please, can you postpone the meeting? Without using please, you can use this. I wonder if you might lend me your jacket. This is very cool and also this is English and also these are new for you all. So learn it from now onwards you have to use these kinds of words when you are using please. So even I will be checking this when you are asking me something. When you want to say please you can use these words. Okay. These are really really nice ways of saying please over and over again. Okay. Next we have five alternatives for sorry. This is so important because we are sorry every time, right? When we do something. So, this is a very important one. So, the first one. It was thoughtless of me. It was thoughtless of me. 
say say it was thoughtless of me to call you so late now you have gone uh, to your friend's house and your mother said when you go there call me but you didn't call so when you get back home when your mom asks you say sorry mama i was late without saying that you can say this it was thoughtless of me to call you so late mom it was thoughtless of me it's very nice right another one quite strong this one when you do something very very serious um this one is a bit serious one i owe you an apology i owe you an apology i owe you an apology for my awful behavior you say it like that you do something very 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 serious and you want to ask sorry and you say this i you owe i owe you an apology for my awful behavior let's say now you have not um yeah you have not done your work on time online work now you come to me and you say teacher uh, with a, i'm sorry teacher without saying i'm sorry you can say like this i owe i owe you an apology teacher for my uh for my completing my works very late don't say i'm sorry i owe you an apology okay then the eighth one i take full responsibility responsibility for my action i take full responsibility for my actions now this one is quite more serious that one you might say after misbehaving now when you misbehave you you when you you use this kinds of word i take full responsibility for my action i take full responsibility for my actions in the farewell party now let's say now uh, now in the this it's your end of the year and you are having a farewell party and now you all are playing with water and your class teacher saw that and she is coming and shouting at you all why did you all do this and what did you but but what should you all do you are sorry teacher sorry teacher sorry teacher without using that you can use you come front and you say teacher i take full responsibility for my actions in the farewell party you say it like that understood then the teacher might get impressed if you say it like that i i think who knows for whom i'm saying this you all know right for whom i'm saying this then the next one that's all for alternatives for sorry no we have one another two more another one quiet simple one this one is a simple one very 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 simple i sincerely apologize you can say i apologize or it's even better if you say i sincerely or i honestly apologize now this one is a simple you can use it for daily use i sincerely apologize i sincerely apologize for forgetting your birthday i sincerely apologize for forgetting your birthday now you forgot your friend's birthday and you said her i sincerely apologize for forgetting your birthday the last one is a bit quiet dramatic that means it's too overly drama it's dramatic too much of uh, drama in this but this is a very nice one i like this one i hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me i hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me this one is also a way of saying sorry you don't know this before now you know start using it okay now see the mean example I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me for hurting you. Now you hurt someone very seriously and you go to them and you say I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me for hurting you. So very nice one, right? So use these kinds of uh vocabulary for instead of saying sorry. This is these are very 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 cool and nice one of saying sorry. And the next we have alternatives for I'm fine uh, and good. that's a very common response response you give for how are you when someone asks you how are you you say i'm fine i'm good without saying the same word i'm fine i'm good now you are from now onwards you are going to use these words okay this one is a quite positive one first one i couldn't be better i couldn't be better now you are this means that you feel as good as possible that means you are physically good and you could not feel any better than this so if you feel like that you say i couldn't be better sometime we leave the i you know couldn't be better when you are talking you can uh, say like this couldn't be better someone ask you how are you couldn't be better you say it like that uh now this is an alternative if you are not feeling good 
Now I'm going to say for something, if you are not feeling good, you can say, could be better, could be better. Yeah, it could be better, life can be better. You can say it like that also. Okay. Now this one is less, uh, yeah, could be better. Now the next one, twelfth one, this one uh, slightly less positive. So you say somewhere in the middle, you know, middle, you are good, you are bad, somewhere in the middle. So if you feel like that, you say, I have been worse. What is it? I have been worse. This means you are not the best, but you are okay. But you are not at the best, but you are okay. So when you feel like that, you say, I have been worse. Come on, I have been worse. You say that. Then the next one is lovely. I love this one. This is very good. I always try to use this word when someone asks me, how are you? You all also try to do this. This one is, I am fit as a fiddle. I am fit as a fiddle. That means what? Uh, you are really good, especially when you are healthy. You are healthy and you are very good. You are happy. And if someone asks you, how are you? And how about you say, I am fit as a fiddle. I am fit as a fiddle. Understood? This is a very good way of saying I am fit. So from now onwards, if someone asks you, how are you? Throw back with them. Throw back to them using these kinds of words. They will be very shocked. It's a very nice one. The next one, this one sort of average one. Not too bad. You say it. Not too bad. Thanks. You say it. It's, it's a bit average. You are okay. Like average one. Not too bad. Thanks. How are you? Not too bad. Thanks. You say it like that. Then the next one, we have the last one. I'm doing well. I'm really doing well. You say, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm really doing well. Some say this is wrong. Grammatically, this is wrong. I'm doing well. But you can use it. It's when you're talking to someone, uh, it's kind of informal, right? You don't use it when you're writing a letter. You don't use I'm doing well. You don't use that. This is an informal one. It depends on the context you are in. Understood? So this is an informal word. I'm doing well. Don't use it in the letter. I'm doing well. You, you, when you are talking to someone, when you are chatting to someone, you, you can use I'm doing well. Next section, I have very good alternatives for I am sad. Now you have, now you have to express that you are sad to someone. You, you can use these kinds of words. I am sad. Okay. The first one. Uh, this one is slightly a, like a bit British one. British people normally say yeah, they use this word. I'm gutted. I'm gutted. So when someone asks you, hey, how was the day? You say, I'm gutted. That means what? That you can that you are very sad. I'm gutted. Look at the example. I am gutted that you can't make it tonight. Now, your friend has invited you to a party or a bird or something else, but you couldn't make it, you couldn't go. So you say, I'm gutted that you can't make it tonight. Your friend said to you, I'm gutted that you can't make it tonight. That means, I'm so sad and disappointed that you can't make it tonight. Make it tonight means that you can't come. So you can use the word I'm gutted because without saying I'm sad you didn't come Hana. I'm sad you, without using I'm sad you can use I'm gutted. This is a very 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 nice way of saying I'm sad. Okay. Next one. I'm absolutely devastated. I'm absolutely devastated. See I'm absolutely devastated when I didn't get into my scholarship exam. You say to that. Now you didn't get into a scholarship and you say, I'm absolutely devastated, man, when I didn't get into my scholarship exam. You say it like that. You don't say, I'm sad I didn't get into my scholarship exam. You can use this. I'm absolutely devastated. It's nice, right? Then the next one. One that you use when you are depressed this one you use when you are really really depressed when you feel depressed when you say someone when you being depressed you use this word i'm feeling really down i'm feeling really down okay i'm feeling really down about my marks in the midterm exams you didn't score well so you say i'm feeling really down about my marks in the midterm exams you are very depressed about your marks so you say i'm feeling really done without saying i'm sad i didn't get good marks you can use i'm feeling really down understood so from now onwards use i'm feeling really down if you get low marks don't get low marks okay 
then the next one, 19th one. I'm not doing so good. I'm not doing so good. You say it like this. This is a slang word, okay? A slang word. Uh, now this one, if you really want to explain to somebody when you don't feel good. Now when you want to explain to someone that you are not good, you use this. I'm not doing so good, mate. Now you want to say to your friend something that something tragic happened in your life and you say, I'm not doing so good. Understood. Or else, I'm not doing so well. I'm not doing, doing so well. You can use this word. And then the next one, I'm not doing so great. You can even use I'm not doing so great. The next one, alternatives for I'm sad. Then last one for sad, you also have, I'm a bit down in the dumps. I'm a bit down in the dumps. So you have, I know, you have never, never, never used this word. But from now onwards, start using this word because now you know. Okay, yeah, when you study something, uh, try to put it into your life and do. So this one, I'm a bit down in the dumps. That means um, you, are feel, you are feeling absolutely sad. That means when someone say this to you, when someone say I'm a bit down in the dumps, you have to really listen, listen to them. Why? Because they are very sad. Use this when you are very, very, very sad. Now let's say one of your friends, someone died and you say that to your best friend, you say she's a bit down in the dumps. She's not doing great. She's a bit down in the dumps. That means she's very, 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 very sad. Understood? That's what we say, a bit down in the dumps. This is the last one. Now I'm going to say all alternatives for I am tired. Okay? For I am tired, when you say I'm tired, I'm really tired, you don't want to use the word I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired all the time. Now from now onwards you can use these words. So what do we have? We have I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm absolutely exhausted, you say that. Which means you are very, 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 very tired. I'm absolutely exhausted. Now you go to school, you come back home and you say, you sleep in your bed. Oh, I'm absolutely exhausted. You can use these words. Understood? This is a very nice way of talking English. Okay? So we also have a uh, worn out. I am worn out. This is the 22nd one. The next one. I am worn out. You use worn out when you are, when you can't be used anymore. <coughs> you are very tired. Then you use, I am worn out. Now, worn out means ma what? Now, for an example, see your shoes when the sole is very thin, you say it's worn out. Likewise, you can't be used anymore. That much you are tired. So you say it, I am worn out. I can't be used anymore. <laughs> That's the meaning of it. Understood? So, 22nd one, I am worn out. Then the next one. This one is quiet British. British people talk this lot. This word, they use this one a lot. So this is quiet British. So they say, I'm knackered. I'm knackered. You go, you are very tired. You go to an office or you go somewhere, you go to a party. You come back and you say, I'm knackered, mom. I'm knackered. That means you are very tired. Now there's an interesting thing in this. Now when you're talking to friends, you can make it a rhyming, skill, uh, rhyming scheme for this knackered. You can use when you're talking to friend, you go to your friend and you say, how was the party? You say, I am cream crackered. This is not a formal word. I'm saying you, this is a slang. You can't use it for letters and all. You just use, you just use it when you talk. I'm cream crackered. You can use this cream crackered uh, with your friends. This is a very slightly informal. You can't use it to teachers and all. Don't start using this. Use it for your friends. I'm cream crackered, man. That means you are very very tired okay from now onwards start using these words this is very fun way of talking English okay the next one this is a very informal one okay a very informal you don't use it uh, in I have seen a lot of people using this in essay so don't use this is uh, this in essay or letter or notice or anything else this is an informal one and that is I'm totally done. I'm totally done. I'm done with this. You say, right, when you are tired of something, when you are tired of your uh, friend being bickering you always, you say, I'm done. Stop it. You can use it like that. Understood? I'm totally done. I'm totally done. That is the 24th. 
and the last one in the alternate is for I am tired I am completely drained or else you can use I'm completely sucked that means we use this at the end of the day that I'm completely drained now you go to let's say um, you go to a carnival and you play like nothing and you come back home in in some kind of a vehicle and you come to home and you say I'm completely drained mama that means what you are very tired and you use this I'm completely subbed you can use also I'm completely subbed now these are very good ways of saying I am tired you can use these words these are very good right now um, I know you have not used these words before from now onward start using it this is a very 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 good way of talking okay the last five next one is the last five we have alternatives for boring when you say you're boring use these five words okay boring words to saying that you are bored okay these are the these are the not boring words okay not boring words okay the first one you could say sorry first one you could say i am bored to death i am bored to death now i can die i'm so bored you can say it like that i can die i'm bored to death that means it is it was so something that you were doing it was so boring you say i am bored to death understood you go, you go to a lecture or something and your mother asks how was the lecture you say i am bored to death mama understood and the next one we have i am or else you can even use i am bored to tears also okay next one we have it's like watching paint dry it's like watching paint dry so if you are uh, now let's say Mm, you have gone for a cake class okay now you have gone for a cake class and it was so boring you didn't understand a single thing of it you come back home and you ask mama how and your mama ask you how was the uh, cake class and you say it's like watching paint dry that means what that means it was so boring like you now when you draw painting it takes a lot of time to dry right like when you say it's like watching paint dry it was so boring you say it like that okay next one you have i am bored to stiff i am bored to stiff that mean uh, that means you're so bored that your body has become rigid understood i am bored to stiff and the next one we have alternatives for boring is uh this is a phrase that we can use to somebody who is boring okay to a person who is boring that is a uh, boring person you can use this somebody who is boring she is a total bore she or he is a total bore that person is a very boring person you say he is a total bore he is a boring person you say he is a total bore no no he is not an interesting one okay and then we have the last one this is a bit of a snow this is a slang word you don't use this you have i know you have not used this before this is a slang word used in you know uk uk kind of word snow is a very for them the snows are very boring for them so so they use snow for this this is a bit of a snow this is a, this is a slang word okay uh, snow is that something is boring for them for them for uk people that is boring because they have it all the time so they say this is a bit of a snow they say it like this. that's all for alternatives for boring so these are the 30 words i want you all to learn instead of saying please sorry i'm tired boring uh, i'm fine you can use these word i hope you all enjoy this uh, session today learn new words and start putting that into your daily conversation which uh, this uh, that is the victory of mine understood if you all do this in your daily life i'm i'll be very happy okay So, so this is the end, I guess. We have done all the thirty. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope I was not a bow. I was not a total bow. So that's it. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.